Good morning and welcome to Christ Church for this service of Holy Communion. A special welcome if this is your first time here. There are uh, various welcome cards in the pews. If you think you'd like to know more about Christ Church, would like to be kept in contact, please fill in one of those and hand it to either one of the children at the back or to me at the end of the service. You'll have seen the notices going round the last couple of minutes. A couple of things that draw your attention to. Love, uh, uh, Friendship Club this Wednesday. Um, if you haven't signed up for lunch yet, please do. It's good to know the numbers beforehand. If you can stay afterwards. This morning we are having refreshments through in the Harvard Hall. I don't know if we've got any, do we have any obsessive followers of the Church of England lectionary? <laughs> no? Well, there's a surprise. I'm shocked. Um, over the course of uh, each week, there is things come up, you get the saints, you will hurdle, it's Luke, it's Peter, and then you get the great Anglican divines, and you'll get some uh, historic figures. Um, today's one uh, uh, didn't catch me off guard, because Ian Kirk sent me an email last night, but it flashed up on my screen this morning. Today is the 70th anniversary of Queen Elizabeth uh, um, becoming queen. So uh, um, it is only right, I think, he says, and Tim's got some music ready, excellent. I think uh, it's only right that we sing uh, um, the national anthem. So we don't often do that. Normally only remember remembrance. I think uh, none of us are ever going to see a queen or be on the throne for 70 years ever again. So uh, I think it's right that we do that. Why don't you stand and do that? <laughs> you'll meet this morning are either up on the screens on either side, or uh, if you are, um, have difficulty seeing those screens, there are some paper copies available. If you don't have one, if you like one, stick a hand up, I think there are a couple left. So let's just spend a moment in quiet before we begin our time together. Praise the name of the Lord. Ascribe greatness to our gods. Lords, open our lips, and we shall praise your name. So let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will stand to sing our first hymn of worship this morning. Alleluia. Sing to Jesus.
near the beginning of our service, we put ourselves right with God in words of confession. And we hear that when we say sorry, God forgives us. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to the Lord, confessing our sin in penitence and faith. So let us admit to God the sin which always confronts us. We say to God, O King enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the glory. this morning is our college that collects the prayers of the people together. This one is for the fourth Sunday uh, before Lent. Lords of the hosts of heaven, our salvation and our strength, without you we are lost. Guard us from all that harms or hurts and raise us when we fall through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen. Amen. Have our first reading, please. Barbara, do we have a ring? Do we have a ring with this morning? Oh dear, that's right. Enter stage left. <laughs> stage right. Yeah. The uh, reading is taken from Psalm 77, verses 11 and 12. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate all your mighty deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes. 
We're spending rather a lot of time standing up and sitting down today, aren't we? We're going to stand up again. We have uh, another hymn. We're going to stand and sing. Lift up your heads, you mighty gates. <coughs> Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to him, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. <coughs> oh, sorry, this is the Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> if you'd like to take your seats again, please. Thank you, Julie. And thank you for having me on the end. That was great. So, we did a, uh, a short series on giving in January. We're doing another short series for most of the weeks in February. 
looking at Holy Communion. Holy Communion is one of those things we do week by week. Uh, uh, it's the law of the land. There's supposed to be a communion in every parish church in the country every week without fail. It doesn't always happen, I'm afraid. Uh, but I think some of the times we do that, we don't actually necessarily know um, a great deal of what we do. Um, there we go. Back in the distant past, many, many years ago, before my time at Theological College, uh, uh, before my curacy, I had to meet with someone from the St. Albans Diocese to work out if God was actually calling me to become a priest. As part of this, I had to do all sorts of reading, great theological tomes. It was a good thing. It helped me focus my mind, encouraged me to explore aspects of my understanding of faith that I'd never really spent much time thinking about before. But one of these was a book by a uh, previous Bishop of Portsmouth, a guy called Kenneth Stevenson, and it's called Do This, The Shape, the Style, and the Meaning of the Eucharist. It was a jolly long title. But having been brought up in a Baptist church, I had a particular view of communion. Sometimes we call it a low view of communion. That doesn't mean we think it's less important. Baptists think it's less important. Just maybe a slightly different understanding. Yes, Jesus said we should have communion to the Baptist church, and, and probably, probably still the same down the road at uh, Baptist churches locally here. Regularly celebrate communion. But regularly, we'll do twice a month once in the morning, uh, and once in the evening. In uh, the church I went to as a teenager, it was seen as a memorial. It was a place where we remembered <laughs> Jesus at the Last Supper, his words and his actions. We thank God for each of the elements. For those that have never been to a Baptist church, this is how it tends to work. Um, the bread was passed round, so each person takes it, passes the bread on, Someone takes it and then so on and so forth to disappear off around the congregation and hopefully come back at the end. And then we were all given those little cups to drink. You know those? You know the ones? They're a bit like shot glasses. Which does mean, certainly when I was a teenager, the temptation is because basically you have to be part of the time. But everybody drinks wine at the same moment. I always want you to do that thing you see on the movies where someone goes throws the glass down and just shouts, huzzah! Um, I was never quite brave enough to do that. At the end of the service, any unused wine was poured back into the bottle. Again, this is something which we finish every week. We'll be looking at why we do that in another week. Um, but it was poured back in again the next time there was a communion service. A very different way, of pra a different kind of practice to what we do. So actually training for Anglican ministry meant I had to look far more deeply at communion than I ever had done before. And that's what we're going to be doing here in three of the four Sundays in February. We're going to be looking at three aspects of communion, there are others. We're going to be looking at remembering fellowship and thanksgiving. And to kick off this morning, we're going to start with remembering I had a healthy discussion with a member of a church on the other side of the country a while ago. Many of you, I'm sure, have had healthy discussions in the past. That's the best euphemism I can come up with. It was a very healthy discussion about the merits of repeated liturgy. He was of the opinion that the familiarity of the words was one of the great strengths of Anglican liturgy. So much so that he wasn't hugely enthusiastic if I did anything seasonal. So in the Church of England, we kind of change some of the words. We can change some of the words depending on what time of the year it is. He was a cradle Anglican, and he could, by his own admission, repeat everything from the general confession to, to, to uh, various versions of the creed by rote. He didn't need any words in front of him. And he saw that as being a real strength no need for written words. Now, I do have some kind of sympathy with that view. My problem with it is that the familiarity can sometimes mean we don't interact with the words anymore. If it's so familiar that you just say it, 
you don't necessarily think about them. Familiarity can be a comfort, but equally, I suppose, as the phrase go, familiarity can breed contempt, not with the words, but just it just becomes something that just is. So remembering, remembering, not necessarily remembering the words, but remembering how much of an important aspect of Holy Communion is the remembering of it. Well, at least in part, is to do with the history on which Holy Communion rests. We met Jesus this morning uh, in that second reading from Luke. We met Jesus as he was uh, sending Peter and John to go and prepare the Passover meal so they could celebrate it together. Luke tells us they went into the city and they prepared the Passover meal. Which is great if you know what that is. Luke doesn't tell us the details of what that preparation entails. And for that we're going to make a very brief detour several hundred years before that to the time of Moses and the escape of the Jewish people from Egypt. So this is where Passover and then in turn communion comes from. So the book of Exodus tells us that Moses went to Pharaoh uh, um, and tell him that he needed to let the Jewish people be freed from slavery. Pharaoh refuses and God sends various plagues. These plagues get pro progressively worse. Uh, but Pharaoh's heart, the Bible tells us, Pharaoh's heart remains hard. He does not want to let the Jewish people leave. Eventually, the final plague, the angel of death, arrives and uh, um, passes over the land, killing the firstborn son of any house. The angel of death goes over, except the homes of the Israelites who have marked their doors with lambs bloods. These are the homes that are spent. This is the Passover. Quite literally, the angel of death passes over the homes marked with lambs blood. There are other suggestions of why it's called Passover, but that, I think, is the one that makes uh, the most sense. So Exodus chapter 12 explains the set of instructions from God on how you get to the point of having some lamb's blood to paint on your door. <coughs> I don't know about you, I don't tend to have any lying around the house. It's not a tea. I can get out and start painting. You have to find a young, perfect lamb or goat, male, that has to be sacrificed. That's where the blood comes from. This lamb or goat is then roasted and consumed, and anything left over is burnt until nothing remains. Bread made without yeast is the main accompaniment, and those who are eating the Passover meal have to be dressed in a way that means they're ready to travel. The phrase in the Bible is you have your cloak tucked into your belt, presumably, so unlike a cassock, you can move quite quickly and speedily as you're exiting your uh, uh, slavery. So that's what God tells them to do. But this is not a one-off meal, says God. This is not the only time you're to do it. This is from Exodus 12. This is a day you are to commemorate, says God. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. That is the NIV translation of verse 14. The New Living Translation begins that verse like this. God says, this is a day to remember. <coughs> and that's where it's become. Passover is a remembrance. It's done the world over. Jews still celebrate Passover. There is a 15-step procedure I have written down. It's long. There's lots of words. But there's a 15-step procedure for the way that the meal is done when Passover takes place. There's still bread, there's still a meal of some sort, there's lamb, there's wine. There's a retelling of the Passover story every time it's celebrated. 
and prayers of blessing. It's more than an echo of the past. There are familiar words, there are familiar actions. They build <coughs> layer upon layer, and you get this kind of entire act of remembrance. Remembering that they were God's chosen people. Remembering that he rescued them from slavery in Egypt. I think it's a real pity that we don't get Luke doesn't actually explain the whole of the Passover stuff. He doesn't give us any detail, which I think is, a, is a such a shame. It would have made the gospel longer. But I think we can fairly safely assume that that was the pattern that Jesus and his disciples went through when they celebrated Passover. They were taking parts in a meal that remembers what God has done for them. And that first reading we heard this morning from the book of Psalms, it sums that up well. We heard this, But then I recall all you have done, O Lord, I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. So the first part of Holy Communion, remembering, is how the Last, Last Supper itself, in the form of the Passover meal, is an act of remembering. Remembering that Jews have done hundreds of years. So we're remembering the remembrance. It's kind of a, a, a process of how things goes on and on backwards. It gives even more significance, I think, to the words that Jesus says at table. And we'll get to those in a moment. But before we get there, let's see how good you are at remembering. Who considers themselves who considers themselves to have a good memory? Oh <laughs> one, there's one only guy who has a good memory. Oh no, two. Maybe there's one. A good memory. Who thinks they've got an atrocious memory? Is anybody I, I, car keys? Anybody? Does anyone know where my car keys are? <laughs> car keys? Man. There is a world memory championship. Genuinely, clearly, none of us are going to be entering, except for Girl Wendy. I've got forms to fill in when we're finished. In the days before it was famous for something else, Wuhan in China, you may have heard of it, but they hosted, the, actually, I don't know, this might be the last thing they did, the 2019 World Memory Championship. The picture on the screen is Kim Surim of North Korea. Now, among the various feats she achieved, Kim Surim of North Korea recalls, and this is astonishing, the correct order of 2,000 530 playing cards in an hour. So basically she had an hour, she lived through them all, and then afterwards she repeated back that order of two and a half thousand playing cards. That is just extraordinary. That's like a second and a half for each card, which is great for the first five. <laughs> but after that, golly. Well, there are tricks and habits that help extreme memory fits. <coughs> but I can't, honestly, I genuinely use my car keys at least once a day. There's very little chance I can remember the order of a single deck of cards, let alone where many decks of cards that is. It is an impressive feat, but not a lot of use unless you're planning to go down the casino and start counting cards. It's a neat trick, but not particularly useful, I guess. Remembering what God has done for us is a good way of keeping our minds and hopefully a life focused on Him. Remembering in Passover was a way for the Jews to remember how blessed they were, how fortunate they were, how fantastic it was to have God as their God. So that's what Jesus and his friends are doing at the Last Supper. They are remembering. Which 
does make the words and actions that Jesus does even more significant. He gives thanks for the wine. He tells them to divide it between them. He gives thanks for the bread and then gave it to them. And then he says, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the first Passover, the Jewish people are told this is a day they should remember. Keep the fast Passover feast, keep on doing it, and when you do, remember me, remember God, remember what he's done. And then Jesus, the Lamb of God, shortly to be sacrificed himself, tell his friends that their meal together should be one they repeat, the same way the Passover is repeated. And when they do, they should remember. They should remember him. So the past summer, a remembering of the saving of the Jewish people, and the last supper, Holy Communion, a remembering of the saving of the world. So when we come to Holy Communion, and we will be doing that not too distant future, we follow a pattern that is similar to the Passover. We have bread, we have wine, we have prayers of blessing, and we retell the story of the Last Supper. We repeat it, not just because Jesus told us to, although that in itself would be reason, but we repeat it because it is important not to forget. We repeat it because, in the words of one of our Eucharistic prayers, this is both the story of Jesus, but it is our story too. We're going to be looking at the fellowship aspect of communion and how we do that together, and the thanksgiving aspect of communion later this month. But as we finish this first week, and our focus on remembering, what ends by repeating just the first half of that short reading from the Psalms we had earlier, so when we come to share bread and wine, when we come to remember, let these words be the ones we have at the forefront of our minds. I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, so many opportunities to meet you in your creation, in the faces of others, and then at the Lord's table. When we do that today, may we not just remember, may we live that communion, knowing that we eat and drink. As Jesus told us to, we remember as he told us to, we remember you are a great God. You are the God who saves. Amen. <laughs> We're going to stand now to declare our common faith in the words of the Creed. Would you please stand? So we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Mm -hmm. Please like to take your seats again, and we let in our prayers. Thank you. 
pray. Lord, as we prepare to receive communion, we remember your sacrifice made on our behalf. And we pray that our lives will be worthy of your forgiveness and love. We pray that your Holy Spirit would breathe life into your church, particularly for us here at Christchurch, and that you might equip us to do your will in our lives. We thank you for the fellowship we enjoy here, for being able to meet for coffee again after the service, and for the many groups which bring us together. We thank you for recent innovations, such as the Craft Club, and Plan B. We thank you for the welcome given to people of all ages, but we do pray particularly for our work amongst young people. We pray that more families with young children would return, and perhaps others might be prompted to visit us for the first time. We pray that Christchurch might be a place where children of all ages and young people would make new friends and look forward to learning about you together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Away from our shores, we pray for Ukraine as it prepares itself for a possible invasion from Russia. We do earnestly pray that war can be averted and that diplomacy, the threat of sanctions and the strength of Western nations can put a halt to these threats. We pray that President Putin would remove his troops from around Ukraine's borders. We pray for the people of Ukraine who value their independence and just want to get on with their lives free from fear. We pray too for other parts of the world where there is war, unrest, real hardship and famine. We pray particularly for the people of Afghanistan 60% of whom are enduring acute starvation. We pray that aid would reach them without falling into the hands of the Taliban. We pray for women and girls in Afghanistan who are being denied education and the freedom to work and to go about their lives without restriction. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Within our own shores, many too are enduring hardship, although not of the same magnitude, but real enough to make life very difficult for the poorest and most vulnerable. The recent spike in energy prices, inflation, and the coming increase in national insurance payments will affect us all, but we pray particularly for those who are forced to make a choice between putting food on the table or turning on the heating. We pray that our government can find ways of mitigating these pressures and helping those most in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our overstretched and exhausted NHS, giving thanks for the tireless work of doctors and nurses and others. We pray that the spread of the Omicron variant, variant would start to abate and that there will be no further mutations which could cause concern. We pray for an end to this ghastly pandemic, for life to return to normal, and for our economy to grow in order for all to enjoy a better standard of living. We pray now for all those who know who are suffering in some way. <coughs> we pray for Anne, June, Margaret, Jane, Jack and Dee, Rose, Christine, Anne, Daphne, Susan, William, Gwyn, Jane, Keith, Anne, Angela, Anthea, Nicola, Sam, Andrew, and another Andrew, we pray too for the family and friends of Elizabeth Sawbridge. And finally, we pray for our Queen as she celebrates the 70th anniversary of her accession to the throne today. 
we pray that you will keep her in good health and bless the remaining years of her long and devoted reign. And now let us conclude our prayers by saying together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Some peace. I thought I'm going to get some hammer sand sanitizer out just in case. <coughs> Would you like to stand? <coughs> As always, we've shared the peace here since the pandemic. Do not feel feel you have to shake anyone's hand. If you want to wave or nod or whatever. I'm very happy to shake anyone's hand if you'd like to come up and do that. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in the peace of the Lord. Be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. this morning is glorious things of thee are stuck.
in this bread that we break, we shall remember Jesus with this wine that we bring. We shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Lord, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, who took flesh as your Son, the Lord born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us, on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for your holy people. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. These gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice, made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and his glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by you, and with you, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Forgive us today our daily debts. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the for the kingdom, the power, and Glory 
every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son. Lords, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
go before us, Lord, in all we do. Your most gracious favour. And guide us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name. And finally, by your mercy, receive everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say to you, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and stand to sing our final hymn this morning. Bless the Lord's, O oh my soul, ten thousand years. gods. May we who share this banquet, glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation, our life and our hope, who reigns as Lord, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the gods of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you all now and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.